So today we'll be going a further deeper. What are the different uses? So what happens is, yesterday we had already said in mitral stenosis, whenever you are trying to assess using Wilkins score, someone's microphone is on, I guess. I can hear a lot of noise. Someone's microphone is on. Please mute the microphone. Great. Now it's better. Okay. So let's start today's session. As I was already telling, we are going to go further deep about the usage of echocardiography. So what are the different usage for this? So different usage is, as I had said, it not only for the valvular functions, but also for the regional wall motion abnormality. You can try to assess the heart's function as well. Is there any, emer any emergency usage as well for that? So there are plenty of indications in which the echocardiography can be used. So now coming to the main topic about which we were discussing was about whenever we are trying to use the it for the mitral stenosis. Mitral stenosis, as I was talking about, there are four gradings, especially using the Wilkins scoring on four parameters again. So which was the mnemonic which we all had learned yesterday was MLCS. MLCS was standing for medical legal cases in a short form. So MLC stands for basically is leaflet mobility, M, L for the, uh, the leaflet thickness of course, MLC, C for calcification and the subvalvular thickness. Okay. Uh, so now those, what are those four, how do you grade those? Uh, now, so you know those, these are the four parameters on which you have to grade. So you will be grading into four, math, uh, four uh, grades. So what are those four grades? So what will happen is if the leaflet mobility is minimally restricted, okay, the tips, so you can see it clearly in these slide, how they do they look like? So it can be minimally restricted only at the tip. Sometimes it can be going up to the mitral valve leaflet as well. Sometimes it can be up to like almost four to five millimeter. And sometimes you see there is a brightness which is there on the single area itself. So this is how the calcification will be seen. If you see brightness on one area, the calcification, that's how you say it about the thickness when normally uh, it is near normal, not normal actually. Like so, you see it like around four to five millimeter thickness is there. But when, of course, thickness can keep on increasing in terms of fewer millimeters, five to eight millimeters. And then when the entire leaflet is uh, involved as well, then of course also when the entire leaflet is involved and more than eight to ten millimeters as well. So similarly, what happens is you also try to focus on the leaflet mobility so the in the four grades what you try to see is it will be great you will be giving a score of like one when it is minimally restricted okay if it is mid and base leaflet portion is also involved as you can see it over here otherwise sometimes even in the diastole the base portion is moving going forward actually and otherwise sometimes when there's no diastolic forward movement at all, then you're going to give a score of four. So on the basis of different movements, which you can see over here, you'll be giving a score. So in this as well, uh, this figure, you can see it very clearly. Mitral valve valvuloplasty is indicated in mitral stenosis echo score for less than equivalent to eight. When a patient has that score, then a favorable outcome can be promised for the patient. So as you may see on this basis, how do the scoring is done. So maximum score on the first one can go up to four, this one to the nine, after three, after half an hour, after half an hour, after three. Then similarly, in this last parameter as well, so you, when you are giving the scores, you can go up to 13. So now this slide, what it beautifully shows is, 
the different M modes, what happens in different pathological conditions. So for example, if the patient has a mitral valve prolapse, so how do they look like? So for example, the first one is of course you need to know how does it look like normally. So during the diastole and this is during the systole. Later on, so these phases, they will keep on varying because whenever you are trying to do an M mode of the valve, it will be all different during the different cases. And that's why this slide is very, very important. I would even suggest that you can try to do is take a printout of this slide, put it up for yourself. You can always keep on referring so that it's always there in your permanent memory. So the first one is referring to the mitral valve prolapse, okay, for the both the leaflets. So this is how it looks like during the sisley, and this is how in the dastly. And this one is for the mitral stenosis. So the, during the mitral stenosis, what happens is those leaflets are not coming properly close to each other, anterior and the posterior one, and that's why you see it like this. Later on, when there's systolic anterior motion, systolic anterior motion means especially of the anterior mitral leaflet. So normally during the systole, the movement will be opposite. So this is how, however, it looks like going opposite in the systolic anterior motion or SAM it is called. Similarly, if there is atrial myxoma and if you do a M mode scan, it looks like this. The next figure shows about the premature closure, premature closure, and how do you see it? How do you see it is because what happens is this flat line, no, it will be a little bit longer, and this is happening before the QRS, so that's why you call it as a premature closure. And then again, if the patient is having atrial fibrillation, it changes further, further, further aortic regurgitation, even further vegetation as well. So if you are good in your M mode scanning itself for the patient, you will be knowing what is the possible problem as well for the patient. So that's why each and every fundamental concept is very, very important and you should not be neglecting this. And now coming to the next valve. So then one of the other important valve is aortic valve. So in the aortic valve, stenosis is can be quite a lot common as well. So how do you differentiate about this? So you can tell it in terms of mild, moderate, severe. In terms of those things, you have to comment about the area, mitral valve area. It will be called as mild when it is more than 1.5. If it is 1 to 1.5, it will be moderate. If it is less than 1, it will be severe. How do you see that? How, what are the other parameters you need to try to see as well? So you can try to see also the aortic jet velocity. When the jet velocity is more than 4 meter per second, then you know this is patient is having severe stenosis. However, if it is 3 to 4, then it will be moderate. And if it is 2.6 to 2.9, it will be mild. You can also try to do, because a lot of times it happens like uh, some of the patients may be really small, pretty heavy as well. So then that is the time you may also try to use this uh, aortic valve area divided by body surface area as well. But the body surface area should be in terms of centimeter per meter square. And then you can calculate it. So this slide again beautifully shows those same parameters and how do you notice those aortic jet areas. So for example, later on, if you are a little bit lucky, you dissect them out. So this is how do they look like. Okay, and in the aorta as well, how do you see? So the left coronary cusp, the right coronary cusp, and then the left mean arises over here and the RCA takes an origin from here, from the RCC right coronary cusp in fact and this one and this one over here is the non coronary cusp so this is again another beautiful slide i would really suggest you guys to keep a printout 
wherever you are there, try to always keep these values in the mind because these are very important thing. Okay, so as I think you can already understand in aortic stenosis, what is happening is, so the blood is not able to flow freely from the left ventricle to the which chamber is it? It is the aorta. Isn't it? This is how the blood goes into the systemic circulation from the left ventricle to the aorta. So now what is happening over here in this figure? So you need to be aware that you should be able to see these uh, echocardiographic, those images at different levels. So what are those different levels are? I would really suggest at four levels. One is the LVOT, which is the outflow tract. Then comes the annulus. Okay, then comes the sinus. And finally, of course, the ascending aorta. When you do a M mode over here, so you see a tracing like this corresponding to the QRS. So with this tracing as well, you can have an idea about the cardiac cycle. What do you know? So for example, the earliest phase from here to here shows IVRT. So I think we already spoke about IVRT in the last session. Then after that is the next phase is LA emptying. So the first of all, the left atrium is of course going to get emptied. And all. after some time, so there is a small phase of what is called as IVCT. Okay. And then finally comes as the LA filling as well. Okay. So that's why you are expected to know how much is this diameter in centimeters at these different areas. So, so what is happening is the so how much is the diameter of the left atrium during systole or the arteric road as well it is taken during the diastole and the RV diastolic dimension as well so since now we have a little bit more idea deeper idea about the aortic valve stenosis so you need to know about now what is called as the aortic valve regurgitation how do you assess about the aortic valve regurgitation severity so that as well as I said it already compared to the other ones it has its own three types mild moderate severe so mild you call it as when it is nearly 25% of the LVOT area and moderate when it is more than mild but less than severe severe is when when it will be more than 65% of LVOT okay so then otherwise other than that as well you can so what are the other indirect parameters as well you are going to get how do you support for that someone else microphone is also on please mute your microphone please mute your microphone So now coming to the what are the indirect measures, how you are going to get a uh, idea about the aortic valve regurgitation severity. So you can try to look for the PHT. PHT means pressure half time. If it is more than 500 milliseconds, it is a normal LV, left ventricle. Similarly, if the PHT is less than 200 milliseconds, it will be severe. And these are the other indirect parameters as well. So if you want to quantify Detectively, you want to classify so you can look at all these uh, different other parameters as well. So, as I was telling you, if you want to measure the diameters, there are different intervals when you can measure the diameter. So, for example, a lot of times, if the patient has been having aortic regurgitation for a longer time, the, there may be dilatation of the aorta. So, you need to be able to quantify that those dimensions at different intervals as well. Mm -hmm. So at the level of sinus of Valsalva, sinotubular junction, or even the tubular ascending aorta for the ascending aorta at three levels. Similarly, then comes the aortic arch and finally the descending aorta. Okay. So you are you already able to understand. So the next important other important valve is pulmonary stenosis. 
so in pulmonary stenosis as well the problem is so what happens is it's a little bit you can think uh, like yeah the narrowing of the valve is happening so if you want to assess same thing there are three parameters for that mild moderate severe on the basis of the pulmonary valve area in terms of centimeter square if it is less than 0.5 it will be severe 0.5 to 1 will be moderate if it is more than one is of course mild and then so when do you advise a balloon valvuloplasty on the basis of the transvalvular gradient when do you advise so if you will see the slide carefully i have already given the answer as well if it is more than 50 millimeters of mercury that is the time you have to advise the balloon valvuloplasty okay and so how do you notice that the severity of the pulmonary stenosis is according to the peak maximum instantaneous doppler gradient in fact so now to and now if you are trying to see the other parameters like the peak velocity or the peak gradient you can call it if the peak velocity is less than three it will be mild three to four is moderate more than four is severe so once you are already aware of the stenosis about the regurgitation now how do you say about the regurgitation same way three parameters mild moderate severe how do you say so you can say there are some direct parameters there are some indirect parameters as well direct par parameters in the sense when you are trying to see a jet size by the color doppler if it is thin less than 10 millimeters in length then it is mild severe when it is really very wide but even if it is brief in duration it doesn't matter so what matters is the thickness of the jet and intermediate is between the two you can also try to see for the jet density and the deceleration rate in fact so for the mild it is slow deceleration is there and the severe is of course very steep quick absolutely very quick and moderate is almost middle of them so you can also try to see for the pulmonic systolic flow when you try to compare to the systemic flow so for mild it will be slightly increased for severe of course it is very much increased as well you can also try to see for the rv sign if the pr is going to be present for a long time what is going to happen you're going to be expecting a dilated rv right so that's how you see as well tricuspid stenosis you may not come across so com uh, so commonly or so oftenly but you can always have a look on these parameters in fact over here so what are the specific windings for the mean pressure gradient over here then in flow time velocity interval as well the t half and of course there are some supporting findings as well always try to imagine so for example if there is tricuspid stenosis what is going to happen the right atrium size will increase right so that's what you have to try to look out for even over here but as I said, it tricuspid stenosis is not so common compared to the mitral stenosis or even the aortic stenosis as well, or really pulmonary stenosis as well. You come across. So now, once you know about the stenosis, what about the regurgitation? What is happening about the tricuspid regurgitation over here? So tricuspid regurgitation, same thing. Mild, moderate, and severe is there, and then. So what you try to see again for is after three after three days. Uh, so what you try to see is the jet area. The jet area you try to see is in terms of if in terms of centimeter square. If it is less than five, it will be mild. Moderate is five to ten. Severe is more than ten. And you can also try to look out the vena contractor width or also the PSA radius, the jet density and contour or also there are some indirect parameters as well which is called as the hepatic vein flow 
So in that, if you see systolic dominance, it will be mild. If there's systolic blunting, it will be moderate. It will be severe if it is, you see, systolic reversal. I hope you guys will be able to remember all these values. Why I'm telling is, there are a lot of those values, but as I said it, what I used to do was when I was doing my training almost 12, 13 years ago, so what I was doing was I used to literally uh, have those mnemonic play cards close to literally wherever I was taking my, uh, <laughs> having my pillow. So as soon as you open up, more you see, more you will remember, more it goes to your permanent memory as well. So it's a wonderful thing, in fact. So that's why you should be able to recall it more and more often. More times you do those practices, more it will go into your permanent memory as well. And this is what is happening over here as well. So this is a summary for all these values. So this is again another beautiful slide with all the values which are, are used as a reference. Whenever you are trying to do a norm or echo examination, you should be able to know the normal reference